in both directions at an equal rate. Uh, so this cannot work. Uh, and if we sit back for a moment and think about it, we say, of course it can't work. Uh, because nature is full of nonlinearities. Biological matter has nonlinearities. Geological matter has nonlinearities. And if, in fact, we could have nonlinearities to rectify uh, fluctuations, that would mean there'd be hot spots all over the place in nature wherever there was a nonlinearity. We don't find that. This, this cannot work. Uh, putting this in a more general term, ratchets do not work in systems that are under equilibrium. Uh, there was another patent that came out earlier by Franklin Mead, which, uh, according to my analysis, uh, uses the same sort of principle. Uh, this patent is called System for Converting Electromagnetic Radiant Radiation Energy to Electrical Energy. Uh, and what it uses are two spheres that are slightly dissimilar in size. They create a beat frequency, a beat resonance frequency between them, which downshifts the uh, zero-point energy vibrations to a lower uh, uh, frequency. An antenna then absorbs this radiation, it's rectified, and we get out DC power. It can't work for the same reason. We've, we're, we're, using a, a, we're trying to rectify background radiation. It doesn't work. Next, mechanical extraction. Uh, Pinto uh, wrote a number of patents. A paper started a company based on this. The method is called Method for Energy Extraction. In uh, a paper, he shows a Carnot cycle in which, uh, as with a, a normal Carnot uh, system, you can extract energy continuously by going around the cycle. Let's take a look at the, his basic concept. So he has a Casimir cavity, and in the Casimir cavity, there are two plates uh, that are uh, attracted to each other. We make use of this attraction and allow the plates to move together, extract that energy. Then uh, what he does is he essentially turns off one of those plates. He extracts some electrons from it by various means. That reduces the attractive force between the two plates. Then in step number three, uh, he can pull the plates apart more easily since the attractive force has been decreased. Then he replenishes the charge into the plates and uh, then repeats the process. And so he has a, a, a process that goes around and around. So the question is, uh, can you do this? Uh, and the basic question is, really, is the zero-point force, is the Casimir force, a conservative force? And let me give you an example of a conservative force. Gravity is conservative. So if I take a brick and I let a brick fall towards the Earth and I extract the energy from it, then when I lift the brick up to do the same thing again, uh, I use just as much energy to lift the brick up as I got by dropping it down. That's an example of a conservative force. Well, it turns out that the Casimir force is conservative. There are a number of analyses that show that this is, in fact, the case. That means that Pinto's idea cannot work. Uh, in particular, uh, extracting the charge from one of those plates to reduce the Casimir force, the process of extracting that charge must use at least as much energy as uh, you get from letting the two Casimir plates fall together. And so the general principle here is that you cannot obtain power continuously from changes in Casimir cavity spacing. Let's now take a look at our third example. So our third example is pumping gas through Casimir cavities. Uh, there was a patent by uh, two characters, Bernie Heisch and Garrett Modell, and uh, they uh, actually wrote this up in 2005, I think, and the patent was issued in 2008. Uh, surprisingly, by the way, for, for our patent attorney here, all of the claims uh, were accepted by the patent office. Um, and it's called quantum vacuum energy extraction. And let's take a look at the principle here. It's based on stochastic electrodynamics. According to stochastic electrodynamics, we have atoms. And the atoms have electrons orbiting a nucleus. Uh, because the electrons are uh, constantly oscillating around the nucleus, they're constantly radiating. And so there's constant radiation of energy. This radiation is balanced by incoming radiation from the zero point field that's in the background. And so we have a dynamic equilibrium between incoming and outgoing energy. Uh, this is not the usual way that physics 
looks at an atom, but it works. Uh, it's been shown to work to uh, as, as much accuracy as uh, the traditional quantum mechanical view. That means that if we take an atom and we put it inside of a Casimir cavity, then in that Casimir cavity, we know that there are going to be a fewer electromagnetic modes available. And if we tune the cavity right, what we can do is re uh, remove some of those modes that support the electronic orbital. The end result is that the electron spins down. It spins to an, a lower energy, and uh, we end up with a different sort of, of, of orbital uh, in, within the Casimir cavity. So how is this used to obtain energy from the vacuum? The idea is pretty simple. Take gas, uh, flow it into the Casimir cavity. As the gas enters the Casimir cavity, energy is emitted, shown by these two blue arrows. That excess energy that's emitted is absorbed. You can absorb it in a, in, in a detector, you can absorb it in a, in a uh, bath of water and so on, and it's used. And that's, that's the energy that we get from the process. Then, when the gas is, uh, continues to flow out of the Casimir cavity and back into the ambient uh, uh, universe, it's recharged, the electron is recharged by the ambient zero-point energy and goes back to its initial state. Then repeat this process. And so you can pump the gas over and over through the Casimir cavity and, in principle, obtain energy. Um, so uh, the idea can be thought of as a heat pump, but for zero-point energy, where we're simply pumping energy from one place, the, the ambient uh, uh, universe, to a local place, uh, our absorber. Uh, so a question is, can we make this practical? And uh, are we disobeying any fundamental laws? So the initial reaction is, wait a minute, uh, the zero-point energy background is uniform. And uh, we've said that it's in equilibrium. How can you obtain energy from a uniform background? Imagine that you've got an ocean that's all the same temperature. And in this ocean, you want to make use of the heat well, you can't pump the heat or allow the heat to flow from one region to another region and use it because the temperature is the same everywhere. So isn't that going to be the same with the zero-point energy? And aren't you going to end up with the same sort of problem and not be able to use the energy? Well, the answer is actually no, because the vacuum state changes with boundary conditions. It's not uniform everywhere. We can change the ground level, and that is if we have a Casimir cavity, Within that geometric, geometrically constrained region, we've got a lower uh, ground energy level. And so we actually do have multiple levels which allow energy to flow from one level to another. So we're not uh, being constrained by the, uh, the fact that, that uh, zero-point energy is at equilibrium. Uh, similarly, we're not being constrained by the fact that um, uh, w that we need to, uh, that zero point energy is a conservative force because we're not using any sort of mechanical process moving Casimir cavity plates. So the two flaws in the previous two types of zero point energy extraction methods, I believe, do not apply to this. So is it practical? I did some calculations based on how much energy we think is going to be emitted from each. Uh, atomic transition as it goes through the Casimir cavity. And what we need is about 10 to the 22 transitions per second to get a kilowatt. You can do that in a stack of, uh, that, of CDs, for example, about 20 CDs that's about this big. And you can then allow and pump the gas through this and uh, continuously radiate about a kilowatt of zero point energy. It takes, if you do a calculation, about 0.4 watts to uh, carry out the pumping. And so uh, the energy out is at least a factor of 1,000 greater than the energy in. So in principle, this should work. Um, is there another flaw, an underlying principle that we're breaking here that says that this cannot work? And the answer is, I don't know. Let's find out. 
Thank you.